let's just do a short quiz on the total product marginal product and average product along with the law of variable proportions dash shows the overall output generated at a given level of input what tells you the relation between the outputs and the inputs is it a cost function b production function c iso cost or d marginal rate of technical substitution yes it's production function we've already done this production function tells us the relation between the inputs and the outputs next the marginal product curve is above the average product curve when the average product curve is a increasing b decreasing c constant d none of the above it's increasing when both are increasing marginal product curve is always above the average product curve check that's the answer at the point of inflection the marginal product is a increasing b decreasing c maximum d negative the point of inflection is a point so at that point we cannot say if it is increasing or decreasing the state can either be maximum or it can be negative and out of the two it is maximum at the point of inflection we see that the marginal product curve is increasing and after the point of inflection on total product curve we see that the marginal product curve starts to fall and later on goes to intersect the average product curve next if the marginal product of labor is below the average product of labor it must be true that a marginal product of labor is negative b marginal product of labor is zero C average product of labor is falling D average product of labor is negative Please remember the relation between average product and marginal product I always recommend students to assume the marginal product curve as a magnet so when marginal product curve is below the average product curve it will start to pull the average product curve towards itself that is in the downward direction and then we can say that the average product curve must be falling let's check yes that's the answer law of variable proportions is valid when a only one input is variable and all other inputs are kept fixed b all factors are kept constant c all inputs are varied in the same proportion d none of the above now this is very easy this is one of the most important assumptions and requisites of the law of proportion the law of proportion operates in the short run and what happens in the short run only one factor is variable all the other factors are fixed the answer is only one input is variable and all the other inputs fixed that's the answer consider the following table where labor total input sorry where labor total output and marginal product is given what is the total output when two labor 
are employed. What do you think will be the total output? Please remember that total output equals to the sum of all the marginal products taken together. So marginal product when the first labor is employed is 100. Marginal product when the second labor is employed is 80. So total product when two laborers are employed would be 100 plus 80 that is 180. So 180 is the answer. Production activity in the short run is analyzed by A returns to scale, B economies of scale, C law of variable proportions, D none of these. We've done this in detail now. Law applicable in short run is the law of variable proportions. Let's check. That's the correct answer. In Cobb and Douglas production function, two inputs are A. Land and labor, B. Capital and labor, C. Capital and entrepreneur, D. Entrepreneur and land. We've done the Cobb and Douglas production function. What are the two inputs that are considered in his, yeah, in their formula? Two factors of input that are considered are capital and labor. That's the right answer. Production function of Cobb and Douglas is K into L raised to A into C raised to 1 minus A. This is the production function which was derived by Cobb and Douglas where K is a constant, A is also a constant. Both are positive constants where k uh, and a is always between 0 and 1. Production function is a purely technical relationship between input and output, b purely economic relation between input and output, c both of these, d none of these. It's technical relation between input and output. This is one of the assumptions wherein we say that we are not concerned with the monetary terms of input and output. We only want a relation between inputs and outputs.